All right, so those are the menthol tens. Uh, something foul on your feet, yeah. Um, but anyways, pretty, pretty cool art project. Now here's the thing, what's the issue here? You know, is his use fair? Now let's look at this, purpose. Is he critiquing, commenting, building upon? Hell yes, it's a fair use. Is the swoosh or spinnaker, are they creative? You know, or the nature of the original creati uh, creative, you know, yes, right? So likely not fair. He uses the whole damn thing, fair. The issue becomes the, I mean, not fair, excuse me. The issue becomes the uh, market. Would consumers maybe think they're Nikes? Now, obviously, they look like Air Force Ones. They have an upside down swoosh. But remember that the, the bar is very low now. It's would consumers maybe, be, maybe possibly be confused? Is there a likelihood for confusion? And yeah, in fact, there would be. So the use would likely be not fair if it ever, if it ever went to court. Is this blurring or tarnishing? It's debatable whether it actually makes Nike look bad. It could make Nike look bad. It's also exploiting Nike um, marks, Newport marks, to sell a product. It relies on that, that familiarity with Nike and specifically um, to sell the product. Now again, it was a limited run and what, you know, probably lost a ton of money on it. Um, so it could be blurring, it could be tarnishing, it's kind of a little bit of both, that may be an exam question. So just a couple more instances here um, of trademark, like interesting trademark bits. Um, the uh, United States Olympic, Olympic Committee owns the trademark on the word Olympics. So if you want to have a beer Olympics, a weed Olympics, um, you know, uh, a gay Olympics or whatever, you cannot do it in the United States. In the 90s, a group in San Francisco wanted to have the gay Olympics and the Olympic Committee shut them down. Now they obviously allow uh, the, the name Olympics to be used for the Special Olympics because they look like a bunch of real assholes and haters shutting that down. Um, but you can't use like the interlocking rings. You cannot use the word Olympic, Olympiad, or Sidious, Altius, Fortius. My dude, Cutmaster Kurt, uh, put out an album. Cutmaster Kurt's a Bay Area like hip hop beat maker, um, and he put out an album called Redneck Olympics. And this came out in I don't know. I'm gonna say like 2004, 2005. He got shut down by the Olympic Committee. He showed me the show me the letter he got from them. So in the United States, they had to pull all copies of his albums that said Redneck Olympics on it. He then. Re, you know, re-released it at, here in the U.S. as Redneck Games, but all over the world, the rest of the world, it was released as uh, Redneck Olympics. Check it out. The Hells Angels own a trademark on its name. What goods and services do, does the Hells Angels provide? Racketeering, protection, meth transportation? I don't really know. But... In a legal sense, I guess, a club, you know, for people who like to ride motorcycles. Well, they own a common law trademark on Hell's Angels. So when Disney tried to put out a movie um, called Wild Hogs starring Tim Allen and John Travolta, Martin Lawrence, and William H. Macy, in which some dads end up uh, joining a, mot a motorcycle club, well, what club would they join? Of course, the Hell's Angels. That's like the one everybody knows. But the Hells Angels have a common law. Now think about it, a 1%er outlaw biking gang has a trademark, a very powerful trademark, common law trademark on its name. Well, their lawyer reached out, you know, because Hells Angels is a franchise. You want to open a Hells Angels, Eugene, you need to license and pay a franchise and who knows whatever the fuck else to open that, that club here, you know. And so you can't just open that. And uh, D uh, Disney replaced it with Del Fuegos. <laughs> you know, that's the, the gang that they ended up joining. You know, Hells Angels have reached out and sued other people. So Alexander McLean, who um, sold, you know, these uh, rings that had the death head on it. You can see what the, de the death head is. Um, you know, $1,600 dress, a $2,300 handbag, $500 ring. Sold this at like Saks Fifth Avenue, right? Well... 
the lawyer, you know, for Hells Angels reached out. They successfully sued, um, you know, Alexander McQueen and Saks Fifth Avenue for selling these goods. And I love this quote from the lawyer. If you got one of these rings on, a member might get really upset that you're an imposter. And that's damn fucking straight, man. Like, don't want to be messing with that. You know, like, that's like a thing you don't do. I mean, these are the same people who, who when you leave the club, will, will cut your tattoo off of your body your hell's angels tattoo off your body so oh, hell hell no you don't fuck with that you know especially your boutique fashion douche you know no way um they also sued wild fox and amazon of course yeah her boyfriend is is a hell's angel um it had the the wings and all that stuff um and hell's angels also sued them for that um Yo, the word superhero is a trademark owned by Marvel and DC Comics. The reason why is this. If you were to name, you know, 20 superheroes, Superman, Superwoman, uh, you know, Catwoman, uh, fucking Black Panther, uh, you know, uh, whatever, Captain America, uh, these are all Green Lantern, <laughs> these are all registered trademark names of either DC Comics, which is owned by Time Warner, or Marvel, which is owned by Disney. So when you hear the word superhero, you associate it with the superheroes that are owned by those companies. So the word superhero itself is actually owned by those companies. They share a, 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 a trademark on it. They have a cross-licensing agreement. So if you ever want to use superhero, you have to license it from Disney and Time Warner. We'll leave with a little clip from um, Coming to America. I know that a lot of y'all probably haven't seen this, and you know, when I do my little Art Buckwald shtick, um, I know you're interested. Um, so this is just a play where, you know, um, Eddie Murphy's character goes uh, to work at McDowell's, where they make the Big Mick, and they don't have the, you know, they, their branding's a little bit different. Now, clearly this would be blurring, right? Um, but it's just kind of a little funny example to kind of take us on out of here. Uh, but that's trademark, trademark appropriation. I hope it gives you a sense of what trademark is, uh, how to use it, who can use it, how to establish it, um, and some of the nuances of it, you know, uh, appropriating famous marks, making your mark famous, and all that stuff. So that's it. That's week five, y'all. We are like more than halfway done with the pandemic version of this class, the online remote version. I'm DJ Food Stamp. The real Dr. Dre, trademark, here on my tractor at Goat's Beard Homestead, just chilling. Um, hope you all have a great weekend or staying safe. Hope to see you um, Monday at 4 during our happy hour. It's really been really great to like chat with people. So uh, come through, say what up, uh, take care of yourselves. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you in week six in the mix, yo. Peace.